Oh, hi, welcome back. Look at this beautiful flower that I have with me today. This is an orchid. Do you have any orchids at your house or have you seen one before? I'm just sitting here looking at it and you know sometimes nature is so amazing because we can find these incredible patterns and repeated shapes and really mathematical ideas right in nature. What I was just really noticing right now is that, you know, the whole plant is made up of different parts and each little flower is made up of different parts. And I started to recognize that each little flower has sort of three large petals on the top. And if we look underneath, there are two smaller petals. So three and two, that makes five. And each one of these flowers has those five petals. That just always gets me to thinking I, five is just such a fun number to work with. And it gets me kind of thinking about counting by fives. And I thought we could do that together. But what I thought first might be fun is if you could just shout out how many petals do you think we have on all of these flowers? Or maybe how many flowers do you think we have? That's two different um, number stories we can think about together. And I think if you haven't counted by five before, I'll count out loud and you can just listen. But if you know how to count by fives, will you count with me? Let's start with that and then we'll talk about how many little individual flowers we have. But now we're talking about the petals. So this is five, if I could write a big number five on here, but I don't wanna damage the orchid. So let's see which, where's the first, I guess this is really the first one. So we can say five, 10, 15, 20, 25. We have to keep going, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50. If we have 50 petals all together, how many flowers do you think we have? There's something to think about. Did you notice that there were a certain amount of flowers on this first stem? And there were some more flowers on this stem. So it's a little hard to separate them so that you can see them, but <clears throat> there's two on the side here and two on the side here and one in the middle. Two and two and one more. We've got five all together on this one stem. Well, it's the same thing on this stem. Nature is so amazing. Two and two on this side, two and two on the bottom, and this one in the middle. Five. Five flowers and five flowers all together gives us 10 flowers and every flower has five petals. Isn't nature just amazing? Well, I think we should grab our textbook and our workbook and let's get started with today's lesson. Today we are going to do number stories that come right from the middle of your textbook page on 29 so you can open it up and join me there. Remember that when we have a story, the first and most important thing to do is just to read it aloud. So let's do that. Danny has 35 keychains. He buys five more. How many keychains does he have now? We can look at that with our place value disks, can't we? But we also can Think about how we began our time together today. We were counting by multiples. Do you remember what we counted by? We counted by fives, didn't we? We said five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. That's right. So we can 
have 35 represented here and add five more on the lower part of our chart, or we can simply recognize that 35 and 5 make 40. 10, 20, 30. We've got 10 more. They can't really live there, can they? We would take all of these ones and make a new 10 to show that we have 40. He's got 40 keychains now. What is he going to do with all of those keychains? We want to be sure to fill our answer into the answer statement in our textbook. That's a habit I want you to have all the time. Okay, on to our next story. All right, let's read this story together now. There are 24 green apples and 32 red apples. How many apples are there altogether? When we're reading these number stories, we can look for little clues. If we're talking about how many there are altogether, do you think we're looking for a part or are we looking for the whole? Let's find out. So I've got one of my number groupings here, the 24 green apples. Let's also represent the 32 red apples. Oh, look at me, putting my wrong ones on there. Here we go. All righty, 32. So now we've got, we can say an equation that we have 24. And you're right, I heard you when I asked, if we have all together, are we looking for a part or the whole? We're looking for the whole. And so let's think about what this equals. We can work it out here, but we can also do some mental math, can't we? We can think about two tens plus three tens, that equals five tens. We're gonna hold those five tens in our mind. Let's work with the ones. Four ones and two ones, you can see it here, equal that's right, equals six. Let's go back to that number we were holding in our mind. Five tens. 24 plus 32, we've got 56 apples all together. Do you think that we should make a pie with that? That sounds good to me. All right, let's try a couple more. Okay, let's read this story together. Michael had 78 goldfish and he sold 40 of them. How many did he have left? And you can see if you're working in your um, textbook that there's an answer statement there. He had blank left. Now that word left is a helpful word for us in regards to helping us think about are we looking for the part or the whole? But I think another thing that can help us is to take a look at a number bond. So let's put our number bond here. All right. Do you think 78 or 40 should go in this top part? 78's bigger, so that might be a good idea. And so if I put 40 down here, what are we looking for here? We're looking for the other part. All right, well, if we sell 40 of them, we have to 10, 20, 30, 40, sell them off. And then we can see what we have left. Did our ones change at all? It didn't. So the ones is still the same. What we did was take four tens away from the seven tens we originally had, and that leaves us with three tens. So our equation is 78 minus 40, our whole and a part, and we're looking for the other part which is 38. There we go, see? If we just continue to use the tools that we have, we can really make sense of these. The last one I want to do with you uses a word that we may not have used together before.
the word fewer. When we're talking about fewer, another way to think about is less than. One of the number groupings will have less than the other, and another way to say it is that there are fewer in a certain group. Okay, so let's read this one together. There are 58 cows and 23 horses on a farm. How many fewer horses are there than cows? Remember we talked about that word? And again, let's think, are we talking part or whole here? Let's make our number bond. <laughs> you got like a little mini one here. Remember, it really doesn't matter the size or how the number bond looks, but what part do you think we would put here? We're trying to figure out how many fewer horses. It's usually a pretty good bet to take that larger number as the whole. And, you know, that's not always the case. So we want to think about what we know about the problem. I also like to think about what's another word like the opposite of fewer. It's more. So it does sound like they're saying there are more cows, so that helps me think about the placement. And now I want to know how many fewer. What's the difference? That's another word we can think about there. Well, you can see I've already laid out 58 for us here. We could do this mentally, couldn't we? Or we could work it with our place value disks. Let's try it mentally. Let's start in the ones column and say eight minus three. It's like how many fewer than eight is three? And if you need to check it, we can go like that, right? Good, eight minus three is five. Now we need to work with the tens. Five tens minus two tens. Did you say three tens? So there are 35 fewer horses than cows. So that's just a little overview today for the types of um, stories that you'll be working with in your textbook and the workbook. And just remember, work it out with tools, use your number bonds or draw it out with pictures and um, be sure that you know exactly what the story is trying to get you to think about before you begin your work. Thanks for joining me today and I will see you next time.